Do you want to bust your sales quota? Do you want to join the ranks of top 1% sellers? The Top 1% Sellers Podcast gives you the insights and the tools to help you achieve your sales greatness. The podcast features sales and services professionals, leaders, and experts to give you the edge you're looking for. Here's your host, Ash Sadiq. Hey, Sean, we're back here. Now we're, we want to retake this conversation to the next stage and think about, I mean, I love the fact that, you know, part of part of what we're doing on a daily basis is having a lot of these customer conversations. And, and when we've been thinking about, you know, sellers today and the transformation that's happening around access of service, and I've been thinking a lot about that account manager and how the role is changing, um, given the fact that now the customer is actually not, not necessarily interested in what product they're going to give them, but actually in a whole other set of factors such as service level, the security of their data, uh, the reliability on the long term. So stepping back and talking to these sellers, what do you advise them to do in terms to become really successful in those conversations? And then we'll come back and connect the dots with other people that might be bringing value to that conversation. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I think we've all known as sellers the, the, uh, the criticality of communications uh, and the way we communicate and convey what we know to be the value proposition, relevancy, price differentiation of what we do uh, and put in front of customers. Yes. I think that, that that role and the way we communicate it is, is evolving to this uh, higher level way of connecting with the customer around their business outcomes and the issues that they have as a horizontal organization. And so I think the challenge for us is to evolve our communication skills, take those communication skills and sort of really move them from being really the, the power of understanding the products um, and being able to explain, and this is critical, explain the products. That was sort of, I think, the, the, the first 20 years of, or the last 20 years of selling and then about explaining the differentiation in your products. And I think when you introduce the line of business, they actually don't care how the products work. So we're moving from an explain everything era to what I would say is the show me era. And what line of business and, and still the IT organizations within customers is they expect sellers to be able to show them how a solution can solve the most important business problems. And, and that's fundamentally different from using PowerPoint to you know explain you know, the engineering roadmap of a particular product line. And so moving from, you know, if you will, PowerPoint to a show me through demonstrations of actual solutions, I'd say that that's the great communications opportunity for any seller to move to that space. Remember this, Ash, if you have to explain something, don't have much of a solution. Interesting, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you should be able to show it, right? Exactly. That's why it's called a solution. Exactly, yeah. And I like what you said about earlier when you were talking about the narrative of the story, because I think the demo can allow you to tell that story um, yeah, and, and yeah. show the end-to-end -end process, the customer as well as the business functions, how all of that comes together. You know, I think that one of the great things, you know, let's say PowerPoint served its purpose in its time for creating a logical narrative with the customer and provided an easy path or at least a prescribed path for sellers to build their communications confidence around. If you think about it today, the demo is the new PowerPoint. Yes. It provides a, a mechanism to have a conversation with the customer what that changes, though, and what the seller has to bring to the table is the story, the narrative of how that solution they're selling is relevant to the customer. And that's a different way of thinking. It's outside in versus inside out. Being product experts is inside out and getting that more outside in perspective and, and being able to really, in a way, marry the two is really, I think, where you're going to see some of that communications relevance and really the real change makers, the top 1% are going to be great at that. Just said, I'd love to actually see from your own viewpoint then, if, if, you know, what the top sellers do in your own mind and could even be better at when it comes to those conversations. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic question. And, you know, by definition, we all listen. That's, that's what being in sales is about. But maybe we were trained to listen for different things in the past. And, and now I think it's important for us to start to listen for what's going to inform the story and the narrative. It's that idea that you can get inside the customer's head about how you relate to their needs. Yeah. 
Yes. And what I would say is is that we hear the phrase, you know, we've got to sell outcomes, sell outcomes, sell outcomes, sell outcomes. And that's right, yeah. That's a, a, a wonderful ivory tower theory, right? Yes. Um, but I would say there's two things that sellers can get good at to take that ivory tower theory and bring it down to, to, to sort of the street level. Yes. Number one is, is that I would get really good at understanding the concept of use cases, really trying to know and what are the use cases that really create the type of excess of service initiatives that are going to create value for that customer. Yeah. Use case thinking, meaning how will the customer benefit in a business process or a business model way from the technology, that use yes. case thinking is 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 uh, a wonderful way to ground your knowledge and, and how you build knowledge about the customer. Um, you know, and I, you know, I think we've all, you know, you know, in the retail business, we know that shrinkage is an important issue for them. The use yes. case we have is how do we reduce the amount of theft inside our, our shelves? Is a generalized use case. It's it's not starting with the you know I've got uh, you know high density Wi-Fi that can get you down to one meter location. That's interesting, but how about if I could uh, monitor the movement of the product off of the shelf from the minute it was touched without having to actually install any sensors on the shelf? Exactly. Exactly. That kind of thinking is just learning to turn yourself upside down is one thing I'd say. Um, thinking and talking, you learn to converse that way. The other thing I would say is learn uh, to go back to something I know we're all good at. But it's time to go back to the whiteboard era. Learn to hold unstructured conversations around how use cases can be implemented and how value can be created around them. Just grabbing that marker, as you know, uh, yeah. got the right use case and the right marker. Um, that's the hallmarks of a great conversation. Yeah. Back to that, you know, use case is, um, you know, the frame, the KPI is the measure. And, you know, the whole Zwecker thing is just true. You are what you measure and, and, and how you look at those two together. Those are such fantastic questions to ask the customer, you know, where and, and how you can, you know, really drive at some of their priorities. I think we all know that sometimes having a customer conversation around what are their priorities Sometimes can be a million foot, and you sort of feel like I'm not really resonating or relating to the customer. But when you get down to, you know, what are your top three, you know, use cases in your environment that you're looking at, and how are you measuring success against those? Uh, suddenly, you're asking them how they plan to be successful, and that's really what, in the end, this is all about. Absolutely, I, I, I love that. And I, I, as you were talking, I've been thinking about that partnership that exists between. The salesperson, the services person, and, and, and most typically uh, some partners that are, that, that are part of that equation. Any insights in terms of how to orchestrate the conversation again with an excellent service in mind? Because, uh, you know, of course, in the past there was a hey, big handoff, it is the, uh, the, the networking switch, and uh, I'm off to my next deal. But now it's much longer engagement, um, and it's no longer really driven by the box itself versus. The service or the, or the value, the, the value chain that they are supporting. Yeah, I think um, you know the uh, um, in a lot of ways it was simple before. You know, I had my box, you had your box. We, we, we you know we hook them together and they deliver value. You know, today, there's a, a more complicated relationship taking place. You know, and how different organizations sell together and work together and bring ecosystems to help solve customer challenges. You know, I think that you know what's important is is that some the top one percent seller is going to be the leader of a group of companies or selling organizations. Yes. It's going to be that leader because they're going to find a way to be the narrative leader, to be the one who understands what the customer really wants to solve for and to find a narrative that cuts across any individual company. And, and if, if, if it's the top 1% people listening to this can challenge themselves to know that that narrative is the glue that will bring all of the organizations together. Yeah, 
uh, you know, that's really in the end. Um, I think that is sort of the way multiple teams are going to fit into some uh, purpose to serve customers. You, know, you can't have, um, you know, uh, seven different narratives in solving a customer problem. You know, uh, that's the challenge. You can really have, have to connect together. Yes. And, and, and I think that, you know, if you, you sort of, you know, if I could, you know, just call upon the most overused of all, you know, the iPhone basically took, 10 or 15 individual narratives and made them into one. Yeah, exactly, right. Seller right. has to think themselves, how do I become the Mac OS? Yes. How am I going to take all these different narratives and basically say, I'm going to make it really easy for you to reduce shrinkage in your retail store. Here's how I'm going to help you meet your measurements. Exactly, exactly. You know, and, and that's really, I think, it's tough because, you know, um, all of us are used to our own area and our own box. But I think that uh, digitization is coming for anybody who doesn't think that way, and uh, whoever does is going to be in the top 1%. Exactly. That's a fantastic one to have you here on uh, as part of this conversation. I like how we're keeping it fast and not too long, so hopefully our our, uh, uh, our listeners and, and, and especially the sellers out there that appreciate the team of projects that you've been very kind to share with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, very, very pleased to have uh, had you in on the show, and uh, hopefully we can come back and, and continue the conversation. It's my pleasure, and I look forward to it. Uh, you know, I aspire to be top 1% myself, so uh, anytime I'm hanging out with you, it makes me feel like I'm in that crowd. Thank you so much, Sean. We appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to the Top 1% Sellers Podcast. Give us your suggestions and guest recommendations by emailing us at ash at connectwithash.com. Thank you also for sharing this podcast with your colleagues and social media contacts. To connect with us on LinkedIn, please send a connect request to ash at connectwithash.com. See you at our next episode. Thanks for tuning in.